So today is going to be something that I have waited a long time for and I'm very excited. I'm going to be swapping the contents of my local LLM build into a new case. And in doing that, I am also going to water cool the two NVIDIA 3090 Ti GPUs that I have in there. So this is my first time doing any sort of water cooling. I'm completely new to this and I may end up needing more parts than I have here. So that may be shown in the video as well. But I'm just going to go ahead and just give you a quick run through of what I got. So I got some hard tubing. So I got a tubing cutting kit. I've gotten a few press fit adapters from Thermal Take. I got six fans from Leon Lee, two Corsair 360 millimeter radiators. These are XR7, so they're a little thick. And two Alpha Cool Ice Block. GPX CPU coolers for the 3090 Ti Founders Editions, which are what is in this case right now. And then finally, I got the EK Quantum pump, and uh, you can see that I really don't know much about <laughs> water cooling because I don't even know what this thing's called, but it's, uh, it's a tall one. So yeah, and then <laughs> following that, I got this sort of acid green premix coolant which i think might look cool truth be told i was kind of influenced by the big box here because that's kind of how the mock-up looks and then finally i've gotten the thermal take view 71 rgb case so essentially this will probably be a pretty long and in-depth video so i'm just going to begin by opening some of the components kind of just doing a mock-up of how everything may fit inside this case and then once i figured that out I'm going to go ahead and disassemble this and swap the components over. Yep, cool. So we get our first look in. Very neat. And I suppose it's time to move on to unboxing some water cooling components. Before I go any further, here's just a quick size comparison. Now keep in mind, this case is also being brought up a few inches by the wheels it has. So really a significant difference in size. This is, was a uh, Velocity Micro pre-build that I got for a weird deal at some store that's now defunct. But um, based on my research, this is an old Leon Lee case. So kind of cool, but size difference, very large. So the first item I'm going to unbox now because I am the most curious about this is the GPU cooler. So that's the water block uninstalled, I mean unboxed. And I will have to apply the thermal pads myself, which is kind of terrifying, but you know, shouldn't be too bad and yeah pretty darn cool so to be honest with you i think it will make my life easier to actually go ahead and strip the old pc first and at least get the motherboard and power supply mounted in the new case as i think that will make it easier to kind of mock everything up so i'm going to do that and then following that i might actually go ahead and put the water blocks on the gpus just because that's something i've been a little anxious about doing so i'm going to go ahead and strip the old pc and move it into the new case. So as we just saw, the old case is stripped, which truth be told is a little bit sad to me as that has been my main desktop since 2009, but it's time to move on. So we just are left with card one, card two, hard drive, power supply, motherboard with processor and RAM still attached. So I think the next thing to do, 
I don't actually know. <laughs> I'm either going to put the water blocks on the cards or just start mounting some of this into the new case. Now, I'm not going to time lapse through this part, which is tearing down one of the cards, because I think it might be cool to just show this process happening. Now, I've never done this before, so there is a non zero chance of me destroying something here, but I'm just hoping that it's not end up happening. <laughs> so, there are these little magnetic mounts here. There's four of them, just like this. And apparently it does not matter in which configuration these go back in. So just kind of let them all clump together and then put them off somewhere to the side. Truth be told, I'm actually going to wrap them in the piece of tape that I used to get them off, as I just think that may help in keeping them safe. And following that, apparently this little thing here pops up and it's very simple. Just like that. It's cool, we've even got a part number on it. This is metal, so well, you can hear it that way. So this card here is going to be using T4 Torx bit to get these screws out. Maybe if I just pull on this thing. No, I'm kidding. Don't do that. And don't normally don't touch the gold. <laughs> All right. So we've got a little bit of play here. I am actually interested to see the innards of the refurb card versus the stock one that I purchased from NVIDIA. Well, there's our inner panel. And from the videos I have seen and instructions, this, this, and this need to come off. So maybe I will go ahead and test the zoom on this phone camera. So first we'll try this little guy. And I read that you just kind of pull back on this clip and it should come out. All right. All right, so that came out vertically, as you just saw. Next one will be a little, oh, you can't see, sorry. I forgot I was like hyper zoomed in. So the next one will be this right here. And it seems like it goes up and then, all right. And then finally, we have one in the corner right there. So flip it up and just like that. Now the next thing, and I believe one of the final things to do before removing the PCB from the cooler is to go ahead and remove one, two, three, four. left is to simply remove the PCB, which will inevitably have a bit of force because of the thermal paste on the opposite side of it. So perhaps I will just lightly feel around. And 
Okay, so I said lightly, but we all saw what happened. All right, and then we have our 3090 Ti PCB. Now my next step is to prepare these surfaces, which involves removing the old thermal paste residue. So to do that, I have a little plastic razor blade, some Q-tips, and some rubbing alcohol. as clean as I am comfortable getting it. I don't want to be picking at these little individual pieces of thermal paste because there are tiny components there in between them. So everything else seems pretty good. The memory is nice and clean and these were clean to begin with so no need to worry there. So my next step is going to be to, in keeping with the instructions, placing the thermal paste onto the water block and then placing a little bit onto the die. Now for the continuation of the water block installation, I'm going to get my first hands-on look with the water block and I'll try not to touch the aluminum surface. Very cool looking. that card one is assembled. I did put the IO cover on and I just need to put these three screws in. The only thing that I am a little bit upset about is that it mentions here if you want to put the IO cover on you can just use the M2 by 11 screws um, of the existing back plate which is what I did here but here and not really referenced anywhere else is this sort of I don't know what this is and the instructions don't mention it. So I'm a little disappointed about that because it does actually look like it somewhat relates to mounting the IO board onto the assembly, but it, it doesn't mention it at all in the instructions. And as a matter of fact, it actually doesn't even mention it in the parts list. So it's almost like that's sort of like an addendum to the kit, but they just kind of tossed it in there with the expectation that you would figure out what the heck this means just based off this crap image. So I'm disappointed about this. However, I will go ahead and finish this card up. It looks beautiful, in my opinion. I don't know, you might not like it, but... <laughs> All right, I'm now very happy to report that both cards are now water blocked. So it's pretty cool. I didn't notice any real differences internally between the refurb one I got from Micro Center and the one I bought new from NVIDIA. So that's pretty cool. Interesting process to say the least. And now I think I'm going to move on to maybe test fitting some radiators and other things. 
I've now swapped the case over to the other side just to assist in removing some of the components. And something I'm most curious about is radiator fitment. So I'm gonna go ahead and unbox one of these radiators just as I begin to mock everything up in its position and see how everything is going to fit. Now just for a quick update, I've pretty much taken everything off of the case so that I can better mock up everything. And these aren't placed in here for good. I just put them in for now so that I can kind of try to figure out how to route all the piping and things. But I really do think this, <laughs> this looks so cool, just even as is. I was a little worried that it might look kind of weird because the CPU was still air cooled for now, but truth be told, it actually kind of matches the aesthetic of the cards with the water blocks. So I'm very happy about that. And now I'm just gonna kind of continue playing around with the design and everything like that. My next step is going to involve needing to figure out how to mount this pump. So it will be time to unbox this, which is gonna be pretty cool. The pump looks very cool. And I have to say, just based off of feeling it, it feels incredibly substantial. So it's got a mounting mechanism slash parts kit, manual. I'm not quite sure what this is, but it almost looks like an oil filter wrench for the car. So maybe this is to loosen perhaps um, something here. I don't know. Don't quote me on that. And original packaging seal. So we can get our first look at the pump real quick. Wow. That is really quite cool and it even has a little laser cut I don't know laser cut but the logo in there which is very very neat so yeah I guess I'll figure out how to mount this and get it working here's a quick update I'm just mocking everything up so that I can kind of see how everything fits so we've got the power supply the two cards the motherboard the front radiator with the fans in the front and then the radiator on top with the fans on top of it. I don't believe I'm going to be putting fans on the insides of the radiators. However, I will see how my temperatures are and things like that. This is sort of a trial and error way to build and learn about this stuff. So I need to get the pump and reservoir mounted. But unfortunately, I didn't realize that I would need an additional bracket to do that. So I don't have that right now. I could 3D print one, but I don't have any high temp materials on hand, so I think it may be better to just buy one in this specific scenario. So, yeah, next step is really going to be to mount the pump and then begin the tubing work, which is going to be interesting. <laughs> 